Hello everyone and welcome to Cooking Corner with Giuseppe Kirby Roli. It's a week before Thanksgiving, so today we're going to be showing you how to make an American tiramisu, otherwise called a dessert lasagna, to wow your family. The ingredients you're going to need for your American tiramisu are the following. You're going to need some eggs. You're going to need some heavy cream, some sugar, some mascarpone, some cocoa powder, some amaretto. Then you're going to need two pound cakes. Now you can use store-bought or you can make them yourself. And finally, you're going to need coffee. I recommend 15 ounces of dark coffee. I'm making them in the curie, but you can make it however you normally make coffee. Now in terms of hardware for this recipe, you're gonna need the following. You're gonna need an electric mixer to whip your heavy cream. You're gonna need a large heat proof container for your hot coffee and amaretto. You're gonna need measuring cups to measure out your ingredients. You're gonna need a funnel and a squirt bottle to soak your pound cake with your coffee and amaretto. You're gonna need this little tool. What's it called? I have no idea. What does it do though? It's used for separating egg yolks from egg whites. Speaking of which, you're gonna need a bowl to separate your egg yolks and egg whites. You're also gonna need a sifter to top your tiramisu with cocoa powder once you're done. You're also gonna need a fork and a spoon to mix your ingredients and mix your mascarpone. You're gonna need a rubber spatula to fold your ingredients together. You're gonna need two mixing bowls, one large and one small, for your different batters. You're gonna need a tin or something to serve it in. I'm using a half tin, but you can also use like a Pyrex dish or a trifle dish. You're gonna need a knife and a cutting board for your pound cake. Now that we've gotten all that other hardware out of the way, it's time to introduce the main event. The creme de la creme of this recipe. That's right, folks, it's time to introduce the curing. A few seasons ago, we added the crock pot to our list of tools, and now we're adding the curing. As always, folks, step number one is going to be wash your pans, except for your cast iron ones. All right, go ahead, turn your water on, stick your pan underneath. Get some of that good dish soap on there and start rubbing it all around. Get your pan nice and moist, get the back, get the, get the handle even, get all over that pan. And once it's nice and soapy, you can stick it back underneath and rub it clean. Just, just a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And pretty soon, your pan is going to be sparkling like a star. Once your pan's nice and clean, you can turn your water off, grab a towel, and dry it off. And then, you're ready to cook. Step number two is going to be make your coffee an amaretto mixture. So what you're going to need to do is make your coffee however you do that. But I recommend you make it as dark and strong as possible so it's as close to espresso as possible. Now you're going to need to make 15 ounces. However you're making it, you have to measure out 15 ounces. On my Keurig, there's a setting for five ounces, so I'm gonna do that three times. So, you're gonna to want to put it in your heat-proof container, add your cup, select your size, and brew. All right, folks, once your coffee is all brewed, you're ready to add your amaretto. So, you should have 15 ounces of coffee, and you're going to add 9 ounces of amaretto. Alright, let's do that. Two. Four. Six. We're two-thirds of the way there. Eight. Now you can just add your last ounce of amaretto to your coffee. And, you know, maybe one for you. 
It is the holidays. It is the holidays after all. Good point, Cam. Now you're gonna let your coffee and amarona mixture cool until it's room temperature. All right, folks, while your coffee is cooling, we can move on to step number three. And step number three is gonna be trim your loaves and cut them into slices. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna get one of your pancakes here and cut off all the exterior, all the excess, you don't need it. So all these brown bits on the top, you just cut them off. Just, just slice them right off. It might take a few slices, but you wanna preserve as much of the cake as possible. All right, now that you removed all your loaf skin, it's time to cut it into slices. So you can turn it on its side, start at the bottom, and start cutting thin, half inch thick slices of it. Try to be even all the way through. You basically want a bunch of slices that look like this. Once you cut the one slice, do that for all your first loaf, remove the skin, and cut your second loaf. Once your pound cake is all sliced up, it should look like this. Now you're also going to have little bits and pieces that kind of fell off. You can use those to fill in the spots when you lay your tiramisu. Alright folks, moving right along to step number four. It's going to be separate your eggs and add your sugar. Now, you're going to need five egg yolks. So, I'm going to show you how to do it the old fashioned way, without the little tool. You just use the eggshells to separate the egg. So, go ahead and crack your egg and try to get an even split down the center of the shell. Once you've done that, you just kind of transfer back and forth to get all the egg white out. Now, if you have the tool, that can sometimes be a lot easier. So what you're gonna do, crack the egg into this tool and then just shake it until the egg white falls off. Now that you've got your five yolks separated and in a bowl, you can add your sugar. But before that, you're left with all these egg whites. I guess you can, I don't know, make an egg white omelet or something? Moving right along with step number four, you're going to do the following. You're going to take your five egg yolks and beat them until they're mixed. Then, you're going to add a half cup of sugar to the mix. Now you can mix it all up. When you're done, your mixture should look lemony. Moving right along to step number five, it's gonna be whip one cup of heavy cream. Now, you can do it with a whisk, but only if you've got wrists of steel. Me, personally, I like to use an electric mixer. So go ahead, get your mixer, get your whisk attachment, stick it in there, and we're gonna use this. Now, what you're gonna do is take the heavy cream, you're gonna wanna open it, take the safety seal off, pour a cup of it into a bowl, Get your electric beater, plug it in, and turn it on medium to high until your mixture starts to thicken up. Now, you'll know it's ready when you stick the whisk in and pull it out and it has stiff peaks. And after just a minute or two, the mixture is already thickening up. <laughs> so we're going to turn this down. Now, your mixture should be such that when you pull it out, these peaks here will stand straight up without dripping over. Just like that. That's a stiff peak. Now, the only danger in this step is you want to be careful about over whipping your mixture. So stop once you have the stiff peaks. Check often. Now finishing off with step number five, what you're gonna do 
is take your whipped cream that you just made and add it to your egg and sugar mixture. You're gonna use a rubber spatula to fold it into that. You don't wanna mix it with a fork or something because that'll get all the air out of it. You need to fold it in so it retains the fluffy nature, all right? Watch me do it. Now that you've mixed up your whipped cream and eggs, it's time to add your mascarpone. This little ditty is called step number six. All right, so what you're gonna do is grab your mascarpone like this, open it up, get a spoon and mix it all up until it's a little bit fluffy. And then you're gonna use your rubber spatula and fold it into this mixture. It should thicken the mixture up just a little bit. So go ahead and start mixing up your mascarpone. As an aside, you need one cup of mascarpone, but that's how much mascarpone is in one of these containers. Now that you've mixed up your mascarpone, you can fold it into your egg mixture. You'll know you're finished with this step when there are no lumps in your batter. As an aside, folks, it looked like the half tin might have been too big, so we switched to a slightly smaller Pyrex dish. Now it's time for the all-important step number seven. Oh, that's eight fingers. Seven. Which is going to be assemble your tiramisu. Now for this step, you're going to create layers using all the mixtures we've made so far. So to start, you're going to layer your pound cake in your tin or Pyrex dish. Now, take your coffee and almond butter mixture, take the safety off, and then start soaking. Now, you can add your cream mixture. Using your rubber spatula, spread it evenly over the top. Then, when you finish with your cream layer, you can start the whole process over again. When all is said and done, you should have about three layers. We've just finished layering our tiramisu, and it's time to top it with cocoa powder. Now, while it's true our tiramisu is not a museum piece, it's not quite as refined as a classic Italian tiramisu, it is delicious nonetheless. So, what you're going to do is put cocoa powder in your sifter, and then just kind of lightly hit it over your tiramisu. Now the cocoa powder is all over the top of our tiramisu, it's time to cover it in plastic wrap and refrigerate it for five hours or overnight. After that, you'll be ready to enjoy. All right, everybody, our tiramisu has been refrigerating for 10 and a half hours, which means it's ready to eat. So let's move on to the final step, which is gonna be plating. Now, to plate tiramisu, it all depends on the consistency. If you have a more wet tiramisu, it should go in a bowl. If you have a firmer tiramisu, on a plate. Now, let's cut into this bad boy and see how it looks. That is looking delicious. Let's grab a fork and have a taste. Let's dig in. That is delicious. All right, everybody. That concludes this week's episode of Cooking Corner. If you like the dish, feel free to leave a like on the video. If you like content like this, subscribe to the channel. If there's something you want to see on the show, leave it in the comments below, and I'll try to make it. Stay tuned next week for another Thanksgiving special, and I hope you have a happy Thanksgiving. Bye-bye now. One more for good measure. Maybe one for yourself. I'm not taking a shot of amaretto, can I? I don't know if that's a good idea. And, you know, maybe one for you. It is the holidays. 
It is the holidays after all. Who point cam? Oh! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs>